There's another piece around wisdom, and this is one of my favorite parts of the book, which is around our stories. So each of us are storytellers. That's what we do as humans. Our brain makes up stories, and we're really good at it. And you can make up a story that frees you, and you can make up a story that chains you. And we have stories from our past that bring us more energy, or stories from our past that drain our energy. So when we recognize that we are responsible for our stories, how we tell ourselves our stories, we take our power back. And we'll explore more about this, but one of the things I've noticed about stories is that there's what I call ripe stories and unripe stories. And this is a big piece, because I've seen a lot of us create a tremendous amount of suffering around our unripe stories, and also hang out with our ripe stories and ignore them. So they start kind of plotting. So, what is right and unright? I had a story when I was living in Davis and people would say, where'd you, where'd you grow up? And my story was this. I grew up in Southeast Asia, we moved every two years, which meant that we moved someplace, I would be the awkward, gawky kid, I wouldn't know anybody, I'd be super shy. And then about a year in, I'd start settling in, I'd make friends, I'd start opening up, I'd get excited about where we were living, and then we'd move. And so the cycle would start over again. So by the time I came to college, I was felt really disconnected. I was scared to make friends because they were leaving or I was leaving. And I had just a wee bit of issues around intimacy. So how does that story feel? Sad, Sad. yeah, I broke down, yeah. And that's what I realized one day, I'm telling my story, and I'm like, I am so bored of this story. <laughs> Every time I tell it, it doesn't feel good anymore. It doesn't feel good in my body. It doesn't resonate with me anymore. And so I thought, okay, I've been studying with Miguel for a couple of years, so like, let's just change it and see what happens. So the next time somebody else asked me, I was like, oh, I can't remember. I said I was raised in Southeast Asia. We moved every two years. So by the time I was 15, I'd been to Egypt and Austria and Germany and India and to the States all over the place. I had been to so many different cultures. So by the time that I moved to the United States, I was incredibly open-minded, very, very compassionate, and had a deep passion for intimacy. I knew how to connect with different people. How's that one feel? Good, better. Okay, which one's true? Both. Both and neither. It's a story. So when we get that, that's Huge. When you get they're not true because they're not happening now, it's fluid. You get to be the storyteller and choose how you want to tell your story. What will serve you the best? Now, this is not about going, I hate that story, I don't like it, I'm going to just put a better story on top of it. That doesn't work. Because what that's like is taking a beach ball and pushing it under the water which takes a tremendous amount of energy, and then trying to put something else here, while you're bouncing, you can put each bottle under the water, what's gonna happen? It's gonna pop up. Because you haven't really rewritten the story, you've just tried to bury it. So we don't wanna do that. We wanna be able to bring the story up, and when it's right, and how do you know it's right? Because you're kind of bored of it, or you're just like, this is just ready. You just feel it in your body. I think I could shift my perspective a little bit. It could be just a tiny shift, and it'll shift everything. It'll shift how you feel about yourself, how you see the story. So that's a right story. But then there are unripe stories. And an unripe story is a story that has a lot of energy in it, still, that you're attached to. It's one you're not ready to let go of. And those are the ones usually we're like, I'm done with that story, I just want it to go away. But if you really feel into it, it's not ripe yet. So we want to be really gentle with ourselves around this idea of is it ripe or is it unripe? And to love them equally. Because the truth is, some of us, I think most of us, are going to go through our life with a lot of unripe stories. And can we love ourselves through the places we're not ripe? Is that okay? The answer is yes, we can. And if you love those unripe stories, it's all good. It's all good. I am probably going to go to my deathbed hoping that everyone on the planet loves me. I'm a Libra. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's one of my core, my like core things. 
Have I done a ton of work on it? Yes. Am I much better? Yes. That's part of the default. Okay. So maybe you'll write them one day. But I've just learned to just go, oh, sweetie, there's that unread story. You're OK. You're safe. Instead of, I'm a warrior goddess. I shouldn't have that story. Okay. Which is so not loving to ourselves. Okay. So with fruit, now we're going to talk about fruit for a minute. Are you ready? <laughs> How do you write them fruit? Put it in a brown paper bag. So one way is you take the fruit, you stick it in a brown paper bag. What's happening when you put it in the brown paper bag? It's so cool. What happens is it's in its own little environment, and so it's off-gassing. And the, the, what its own off-gasses then help it to ripen faster. Okay. So sometimes in order to ripen a story, you need to go away. You need to isolate yourself. You need to sit with your own story. You need to be with the discomfort. You need to go to a brown paper bag and close it and be with the story. And you'll find your way through to write it. Another way to write in fruit. Put it next to another fruit. Exactly, this is one of my favorites. <laughs> find people that are right in the area you want to write in. Okay? So it doesn't mean that person has to be perfect in all angles and so you can stand next to them. It means if you are dealing with relationship and you're trying to ripen something around relationship, you find people that are like rocking on their relationship and you go stand next to them. You don't even have to talk to them necessarily. <laughs> Take in some of their body odor. Because <laughs> they've got it. Okay? They've worked that piece. We can really help each other in this way. And so, so what if their finances are a mess? You're not worried about that, right? So you don't have to like, I'm not sitting next to them because they haven't dealt with everything. If they're ripe in that area that you want to write, ripen. So reading books, so physically being around people. When I figured this out, I was like, oh, no wonder I spent years like follow, literally following Miguel around. Like I was always right close to him. And I was like, right, I was ripening. I was just hanging out in his energy field. And there's something really powerful with that. So the books you read, the people that you hang out with, again, doesn't mean, please don't get in this thing like, I must only hang out with right people. <laughs> it's not going to serve you either. You actually want people that are going to also push your buttons in a good way. I'll diverge for a second and then come back. That there was this um, amazing experience called the Bio this Biosphere experience they did in Arizona many years ago, where they created a, a totally enclosed environment and they put people into it, I think, for three years. And what happened in that environment is they planted a bunch of trees. There were a farm and there's everything, but they had a bunch of trees. And for the first two years, the trees grew really fast. And they were like, rock on, look how cool this experiment is. And then the third year, all the trees fell over. <laughs> all the trees fell over. And when they opened up the environment and they figured out what happened, what they recognized is trees need wind to get their center. They have to have wind to get solid. So really, the more what we in the Toltec world call petty tyrants that you have in your life that make your life miserable, <laughs> Why? Because you are going to get so strong, you're going to find your center. Okay, yeah. Some of us are super strong, right? <laughs> so you don't want to avoid, we don't want to live our lives going, I'm going to avoid all the uncomfortable things in my life, because you're not going to get that strength. This is where the warrior comes in. So, another way to ripen is to put it in the sun. Take fruit and put it in the sun. And what that does is it, I see is that we take our stories and we bring them out, we share them with other people that can just sit and go, yeah, that's, yeah, that's your story, I'm here, I'm listening. So there's a way that when, when we as women open up and share our stories, we feel seen, we feel heard, we realize it's not just our story. I've been listening to and an, an reading about women that were part of the first wave second, whatever you want to call it, of feminism in the 70s, late 60s, early 70s. And what they talked about is so, like, oh, is that they never talked to each other. And then they started sitting down and talking and realizing they all had the same issues and how radical that was. That women had no, were not talking to each other at all. 
And so we need to keep doing the same thing of sharing our, bringing it into the light, bring it into the light, bring it into the light, so that it can get unraveled. And here's the thing I've seen. You know, or I know, I'll say this about myself. I know when I'm ready to heal a story, when it's starting to ripen, by who I call. I have friends that I can call and tell a story, and they'll be like, oh my god, I can't believe the bastard. <laughs> you should definitely be really pissed. I'll be like, I know, can you believe it? <laughs> and then I have other friends that I can call who are in this room, that I'll be like, and they'll be like, mm-hmm, how's it make you feel? <laughs> how's that working for you? Right? And I call those people when I'm actually ready, I'm ripe enough that I'm ready to unpack it. So just notice that. Don't judge yourself for it. Because I still call some of my friends and be like, I can't believe this happened. They'll be like, I can't believe it. <laughs> it feels so good. <laughs> but I know at some point I'm going to have to unwrap it because it feels good in the short run. It doesn't feel good in the long run. Right? Yeah. So that's, that's that exploration around stories. Unripe, right. Love them both. Love them both.